I'm going to make an unofficial announcement. Josh is composing music for four seasons, and I think we may be privileged to hear some of that this morning. 
No, no, not this morning, but. Um, spring hasn't been written yet. Spring hasn't been written yet. <laughs> but then he's collaborating with an artist who will be doing paintings to go along with that, and then when everything is completed, there'll be an event in Guilford uh, that will showcase that, so it's pretty exciting. This is part of his master's. Uh, no, no. Oh, I thought you said something about master's. One of my master's degree professors who I stayed in contact with, she's doing the artwork. Oh, one of his master's degree professors is doing the artwork. Master's follow-on work. Yes. <laughs> sure. From network that happened during yes. that process. Yes. Good morning and welcome to Winslow Congregational Church on this lovely pre-spring day. I'm glad you all set your clocks so that you were here at the correct time. Um, some announcements. Uh, thank you for your donations to the Maine School of Ministry and a regional theological education catalyst within the United Church of Christ devoted to the call of ministry in Maine. It's been really important to some of the uh, small churches in our association. Um, we have a number of licensed ministers now who are just doing a wonderful job at pastoring their small churches, and I, we appreciate any donations that you've made to that. Uh, this week, there'll be a meeting of the deacons at 5.30 on Wednesday evening and of the church council at 6.30. Everyone is welcome to those meetings, whether you are a member of the council or not. We would love your input. And there's an important fundraiser for the church on Saturday, March 25th from 11 to 1. There's still some sign-up sheets uh, down in the lower narthex. If you would like uh, to contribute some food to that event, that would be appreciated. Um, we also need workers the day of the event. Anna can, can uh, sign you right up for that. So talk to Anna if you're willing to, talk to Anna if you're willing to uh, help on the day of the event.
Lent is a time for sacred journeys, a time for each of us to be a pilgrim. We journey together and we journey on our own. We always journey with God. I invite you to take a cleansing breath, letting go of cares and worries as you breathe out, welcoming the light of Christ into the center of your being as you breathe in. Our focus for this worship is finding our way on the path of Christ. Let us put God at the center as we confess our brokenness and receive God's grace. Trusting in God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. in the goodness of your love. Help us to be hospitable to all people at your banquet, 
so that all might receive your blessing. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever been told they have a bad attitude? <laughs> yeah, bad attitude. What does that mean when people say you've got a bad attitude? You're ornery to people. You're ornery <laughs> to people, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's usually something, it's a little different than just being in a bad mood, right? I mean, you, they, they can go together. Yes. But it's a little different than just being in a bad mood. It tends to be an attitude where it's all about me and what I want and what I think should happen. And I'm going to just be ornery to everybody who disagrees with me. Right? Sometimes that's what we're thinking about. What would a Christ-like attitude be? Kind. Kind, yes. Come on. Understanding. Understanding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Forgiving. Forgiving, yes. Gracious. Gracious. Compassionate. Compassionate. Welcoming. Welcoming, yes. That's a completely different attitude, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So... That idea of a bad attitude, and people, when someone tells you you have a bad attitude, they're really telling you, and you need to change it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, teenagers get that told to them the most, but they're figuring out who they are, so sometimes we have to make allowances for some bad attitudes while they figure things out. But you can't keep having a bad attitude your whole life because then you're not having a Christ-like attitude. And as Christians, we are called to have a Christ-like attitude. And you guys did a wonderful job of coming up with uh, words that describe that. Generous and compassionate and forgiving and welcoming. And there were a few more that I have missed. But those things, they're really important. So, I want you to think about people with a bad attitude and people with a Christ-like attitude as we listen to the scripture. The scripture this morning is from Matthew 21, 1 through 14, Galatians 3, 27, Colossians 3:12 and Matthew 22:1 through 14. The parable of the wedding banquet. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, "The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come." Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, slaves mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, 
he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe and said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. And from Galatians, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. And Colossians, therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. So, is this, is this kind of a disturbing story? Yeah. This parable of the wedding banquet, um, you'll notice it's familiar because in Luke there's a story, it's not a wedding banquet, it's just a banquet and someone's going to, they brought a cow or they got a, a farm or they got married and that's why they don't come to the banquet. So this is a parable that Jesus told and just as we try to apply these scriptures to our situation, the people who wrote the Gospels were doing the same thing. So they're not exactly the same between Matthew and Luke, these stories. And Matthew's audience, Matthew's people, that he was writing down all the words that he could gather that Jesus had said and the story and to try to tell people what the good news was. So he had all this material, he had to figure out how to put it together to make it a story that really would capture the people that he knew that he was writing for. And the people he was writing for were Jewish folks who had converted to Christianity, but who had now been kicked out of their synagogues. And so there was some bad feeling going on. And so some of that shows up in little ways in here. Uh, but this is a story written uh, from the perspective of reaching those people. These are people who are Jewish, who want to make, by birth, and who want to see that scripture is fulfilled. Matthew tells us that over and over again, that, and thus scripture was fulfilled. So in that context, we get this story. The kingdom of heaven is like a king having a banquet. And as I was thinking about it this morning, I was thinking of we had um, the memorial service for Beryl yesterday, and she was uh, originally from Great Britain, and she loved her royals. Now imagine that the queen's son was getting married, and she was throwing a banquet, and she invited Beryl to the wedding. Would Beryl have done everything she could, move heaven and earth to go, yeah. check herself out of the hospital, get on a plane and go? Yeah, that's the attitude you expect. And the king asking his nobles to come to a wedding banquet, that's not really an offer you're supposed to ever refuse. You go. It doesn't matter what else is going on. You are supposed to go. But what do the, these people say? Ah, no, I've got more important things to do. And some of them, not only that, they got angry at the slaves sent to invite them to the banquet. Does that really make sense? Ah, maybe it's an allegory. <laughs> Matthew loves allegorical parables. So let's say the king is God and the nobles are the Israelites and they've been invited to the banquet and they've said no and so God sends prophets. And what happens when people come and tell 
anybody, any human being, hey, guys, you're doing it wrong. God's really angry. You've got to stop. You've got to change your ways. But you know what? Your ways are really comfortable, and they're nice, and you feel secure. It's easy to be angry at the people who tell you, guess what? Fossil fuels are killing the earth. Have you heard people be angry about that message? <laughs> yeah, it's human nature. We don't want to change the way things are. Anybody grumbled this morning about turning their clock ahead? <laughs> yes. Do we like change? Not as a general rule. We like things to be the way they are. Now, that doesn't mean we don't enjoy new things from time to time, but we want to be in charge, right? So those prophets, they got abused. They were ignored. Sometimes they were killed. OK. So then the king decides to send the servants out and invite everybody, the good and the bad, everybody to come. And a lot of those people say yes, and they come. Oh, look, the disciples are going out and in converting the world, right? And they come to the banquet. OK, I skipped over the part where the king went out and killed the, the people and, and burned their city. Um, that's a hard part. But it's, there are consequences, right? There are consequences. Um, and that's part of what this parable is about. So there's one person there, and they don't have on the right clothes. Does that seem like something that Jesus would really be concerned about, what clothing people are wearing no. based on other things? No. no, it doesn't. So that must be something else we're talking about here. And the, the commentary uh, that I use brought up those other passages, the one from Galatians and Colossians about, remember, those letters were written before the Gospels, so this would have been conversation that would be happening in churches. When you become baptized, when you join the church, you are to put on the mind of Christ. You are to clothe yourself with Christ. So if you have come to the wedding banquet under false pretenses, not there to celebrate the banquet, not there to be changed, not there to be a Christian, and pretending to be one, God doesn't look on that very well. Throw them into the outer darkness. So. They're like, well, but God's gracious. And that's part of what this, this parable does deal with that God is our judge, and God is gracious and, and loving and forgiving and uh, slow to anger. How, how do we reconcile those things, right? How do we have a God who cares about fairness and justice and peace if we don't allow that ever to be applied to ourselves? Right? And that's uncomfortable. But we do know the system, the, 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 the way that this works. What are you supposed to do if you realize, wow, I just did something that was really hurtful to somebody else? What are you supposed to do if you hurt you. somebody? You. Apologize. And uh, do you need to mean it? Yes. yes, you need to mean it. Absolutely. Otherwise, you're like the wedding guest who doesn't have the correct garment. You are doing it falsely, and that is not looked upon well by God at all. Now, just, just to be cautious here, this is all people, right? This group of people were Jews who had been kicked out of their synagogue when they became Christians, and they had some harsh feelings, so it helped them to hear that the people who rejected them might not be looked on well by God. 
right? That does not mean that Jews are bad. No, 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 we do not go there. All people act this way. Even today, even in churches, people have a hard time with this. Back when I was, uh, was my, I think it was the summer of my freshman year of college, I uh, helped out uh, a family, a well, wealthier family on Mercer Island. They, he was a, the husband was a lawyer and uh, the mom had um, just had a baby and they needed a little bit extra help because they had an older uh, child who was five and, and a bit of a handful. So I helped them out for uh, several weeks. And I remember I had seen the mom at church with the, the kid, the first kid, several times, but I hadn't ever really remembered seeing, I didn't know, I, I didn't know who the dad was. You know how that happens sometimes? You're like, I'm sure I met him at some point, right? I must have. Um, I did meet him then. I'm like, oh, I'm not really recognizing him. About a year later, he was running for political office. And we got the little flyer in the mail. I'm like, oh, I recognize this name. This is great. Someone I know is running for office. And I look on there, and it says that he's a, a contributing member of my church that I grew up in. And I'm like, you may become on Christmas or Easter, you don't participate in any committees or boards. Maybe you give money. I have no way of knowing that. But it felt like he joined the church in order to put it on his flyer. So when I think of the wedding guest, that's who I imagine. The wedding guest without the gown, without the right robe. If you come to a church just to take advantage of people, just to put a check mark on your flyer, that's not being a true disciple. Now maybe if he had come more often, he may still have heard the message and may still have been affected and may have become a true disciple. But he didn't even show up. So that's the way, that's one way that I look at this. So the other way is if there is someone who comes to church but who is very hateful and stingy and grumpy and oh you know maybe has a truly bad attitude a completely unchrist-like attitude that can really disrupt the community and so you can see in a community where maybe this has happened hearing that such a person is thrown out would be comforting so we are called to remember that, yes, we are forgiven. When we make a mistake and we repent, we are forgiven. And we are called to be transformed. We are called to do our level best to put on the mind of Christ, to put on that attitude, to have those, that generosity and that humbleness and that compassion and forgiveness in our lives that we give to others. Because if we don't do that, and then there is judgment. Otherwise, there is no fairness. There is no justice. But it's not as a threat. It's just the reality. If you're not part of the community, you're not part of the community, right? So we are called to come to the banquet. We are called to bring friends and family with us to the banquet so that all may enjoy together God's love and compassion and generosity and forgiveness and graciousness. And when we do that, we are building the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And we have to do it continually because we know human nature, right? We are pulled to think of ourselves and to think of our families first and to, to be selfish. 
So we have to keep building the kingdom and keep looking to God and keep following Christ. But we are called to do that because God loves us and trusts us, imperfect as we are, to do that important work. And when we do, we get to see and taste and experience the kingdom of heaven within our midst. And that is good news. Amen. <laughs>
sitting in the sanctuary this morning, so. She's having a very good time. Okay, I saw another hand. Yes, Jim. Janine. Let us be a people at prayer. Gracious God, you who are slow to anger and quick to forgive, whose love is steadfast, we are amazed that you call us to participate in building your kingdom. We know, O oh God, that we often fall short and you always, always ask us to come home, to return to you, to repent, to believe the good news. And so we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you have not given up on humanity, that you keep loving us. And we ask, O oh God, that you would open our hearts, our minds, our very souls to receive the gifts, the good gifts that you are giving us. Forgiveness, compassion, and love. And that these gifts can transform us so that we can be disciples of your son, that we can better follow in the path, the way of Christ, so that we can think in the morning when we get up, today I clothe myself with the mind of Christ. And we remember to have compassion, to have mercy, to have faithfulness, humility, meekness, kindness, and love. Help us, O oh God, day by day, to follow Jesus more closely. We lift to you this day, O oh God, a prayer for Linda for her surgery coming up on March 22nd. May it be successful. May everything go well, and may it make a huge difference in her life. We give you thanks, O oh God, that no one was hurt at the shooting incident at Colby on Friday and we ask for your calm and your peace to surround everyone involved in the incident in any way. We lift up a joy that there is a 16-month-old grandchild in the sanctuary this morning. What a joy. We lift up prayers for Jim's family in Seattle they may find their way through a difficult time. And we continue to pray for Janine's sister, Vicki. May she get what she needs to see her through this difficult time. And we lift up a prayer for Janine as well, as a caretaker in a difficult position. We lift these prayers to you, O oh God, because you did indeed give us your son. And so we pray together the prayer that 
Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the work of building the kingdom of God here in this place to the best of our abilities. I encourage you to give as you are able.
God, we serve you with our gifts of money, time, compassion, and prayer. Send your spirit upon all these gifts and guide us to use them to further your will here on earth. Amen. disciples of Jesus Christ. You are called to clothe yourself with Christ, to put on mercy and kindness and gentleness and humility and love, to go out into the world bringing Christ with you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.